everyone, and welcome to Book Break. Today, my guests Jenna and I are talking about comfort reads, books that feel like a mug of hot tea mm-hmm. and a warm hug. So... <laughs> This was my suggestion. So it I'm was. Sorry if this is out of your comfort zone. So no, I'm going to give you 100 percent credit for this one. And then once you said that, it, I was like, comfort weeds are really important. Yes, like they we are. can't be hoity-toity. We <laughs> have to say that sometimes you just need something that makes you feel good. You do, or or repetitive something. Mm-hmm. All of my books I've read multiple times that yeah. I'm suggesting today. So yeah, I have a good comfort show too. What if you don't know what comfort and joy feel like? Um, maybe try these books. <laughs> so life can be hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean. I <laughs> what? You're going to have to edit that one. Usually what? they're all in one take, but. I know. All right. All right. Back to, uh, <laughs> back to the books. Yeah. Um, no one ever asks how Sean's doing. <laughs> oh, Sean. <laughs> Well, we know your comfort book, Sean. I we really, know you like do your you? dunces. Do you know me? Oh, dunces, yep. yeah. Love dunces. You've read that multiple times, yep, so in it. my mind, what? it's true. Is, that's is, a comfort book. I feel like Dune is a comfort book for you. Is that Dune? So, I've actually never so. read it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm. You know, it's it's funny you bring that up though, because I think a lot of times, certain times a year, I'll go. I do this especially with music. Like mm-hmm. I'll, yes. Like I'm making my annual fall playlist right yep. now. And yes. it may have nothing to do with fall or falling leaves or anything like that. It's just the vibe that's captured for I the agree. next six weeks. I you agree. Know? I do this with m- music, books, mm-hmm. the TV shows that I watch. Well, I've already told you, November is my Alison Krauss month. That's right. Yep. Wow. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just get that the gray I think skies. she's more of a, a March, April gal. That's interesting. Well, she does have some spring stuff, but there's, okay. she's got a lot of melancholy ballads, right. and that's that's <laughs> what I start playing on repeat. I'm diving yep. into that. I'm, you know, I'm like a- her um, Cold Mountain soundtrack songs. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things. I'm yeah. more of a Frank Sinatra fall person. Oh, okay. More jazzy in the fall. Cool. You and Josh Allen. <laughs> Josh Allen. That's on his playlist, uh-huh. right, for pregame. Yep. So. I love him. Shout out Josh Allen. <laughs> hope you're watching. Go so Bills. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're right. so back to the books. Yeah. Favorite comfort reads. Mm-hmm. So everybody kind of has a different idea of what a comfort book or a comfort read is. What kind of is a comfort read for you? To me, either. Mm, it can be books that I read as a kid. I find that's very comforting. For me, I was growing up in Harry Potter release era. Mm-hmm. So that's always very comforting for me. That's a good example of one that's like very familiar. I know what happens. Um, I enjoy the characters. So it's fun to go back and visit that kind of world. Mm-hmm. Um, but also just books that maybe are kind of, it's very similar to the cozy fantasies we talked about a couple years ago. Low stakes, things happen. There may be drama, but no one's... For me, no one's getting beheaded. However, right. that could be someone's comfort as well. I'm not here to yuck someone's yum, if you will. <laughs> so that's my comfort. Well, murder mean. is kind of comforting to me, but a certain type. Okay. Like, like, yeah, like the kind that's not you. Yeah, right, sure. The kind that's not me. That's, that's <clears throat> one thing. But I like like my British mysteries and stuff. Some of those are good. And particularly a series I agree. Like one of the ones I'm going to talk about today, I'll just start with that go one. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Is um, Anne Cleves. It's the Vera Mysteries. Mm-hmm. I've read all of these, and she's also on TV. I believe it's like um, Brit Box or whatever the British Box, channel Brit is. Box. But I've come to like take that actress, and she personifies this character. So now when I read the books, it's like I can see these people on my mind. Exactly. It's like I'm revisiting with old friends. Yes. So she just had one come out, I believe, this summer. It was called The Dark Wives. And um, this one, a man's body was found in the early morning by a local dog walker in the park outside a care home for, like, troubled teens. So I'm thinking, like, a group home or something for teens. Um, Or maybe foster children is what we say here. But... um, and come to find out it was a young staff member who failed to show up for work. So Vera starts investigating this, and there's also a missing 14-year-old girl from this care home. And a lot of people are immediately casting shade at this girl, like, you know, she's guilty, that's why she's run away. But Vera, no, Vera's so (laughs) smart. She 
figures that it can't be her. So she starts digging into the past of these characters and um, finding out, you know, what is going on and what went on in this girl's life and why she ran away. So I don't know. To me, it's just really comforting to try to figure out the mystery, to know these characters, and then other characters from previous books come back, and it's like, oh, there's Joe. I yes, like Joe. Joe's back. You know? So um, that was my first one, and I really, I don't know, I always look forward to when these come out, and I read them, and I watch the TV shows multiple times. Definite comfort, <laughs> and definitely like fall, winter for me. Okay. Like, I don't watch TV much in the summer. No, too much to do. Yeah. When we but, have sun, we got to get out. In it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, I was going to start with a different book, but I'm going to branch off of your um, familiar friends type of energy. Um, my first one is All Creatures Great and Small, oh, James Harry. Yeah. I never read this book. I never read it as a kid, like the kid versions. I never heard about it until the PBS special. And I know, uh, I think it's 70s and 80s, they had the British version. Right. <clears throat> and they recently re have started redoing it on PBS, but I think it's BBC as well. And that show is my favorite comfort show of all time. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful. It's The landscaping is beautiful. The filming is beautiful. It's just a good show. Um, and so I was inspired a couple of years ago to read the books as well. And the books are just as beautiful at portraying um, all of the images that you see in the show. But essentially, if you don't know about All Creatures Great and Small, it's about a country vet in Yorkshire and the 40s, 50s, right. I 30s, think 40s, 50s. Right after World War II, mm -hmm. I think. Or like right before. Yeah. Um, and it's just little stories about the animals and people that he deals with. And you get so familiar with the characters and um, the area, you know, the countryside of Yorkshire and the characters that they deal with, the animals. And just the way that he writes it is so... It's like a warm hug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's funny, too. He is funny. Yeah. My brother used to make fun of me because I used to read these books. Yeah. And I would be, like, slapping the chair laughing <laughs> at some of the stories it's that he told. It's just so good. Yeah. And I, I know it's it's nonfiction, technically. So, um, I don't know. I just really enjoy it. Yeah. I love these characters. I love, again, because you, this is a TV show as well from your book. And you can picture these people and how they're speaking. or mm -hmm. It's just... I think this is like a perennial so favorite. We've had a couple All people creatures? talk about these books. Really? And everyone loves them. And they are. They're like a warm hug. They are. Yeah. It's like meeting up with your friend for tea or something. It's so exactly. good. Exactly. We go with the tea. Yeah. The tea is Yorkshire people. <laughs> I don't you know. Have to stop they might like a good pint in Yorkshire. Oh, they definitely like a good pint in yeah, Yorkshire. Definitely. So that's kind of the area where my grandfather was from. Really? Well, he was from Cumberland, which is way up on the yeah. on the coast. So mm -hmm. yeah, cool. Yeah, they it's have very great pretty. Accents. Very pretty up there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, some of the people's accents, and including my grandfather's, are extremely difficult to understand. Yes. It's like a really thick brogue. Yep. So, well, something else I like when I want to feel like comforted is letters, like a book in letters. <gasps> I love these. I've read 84 okay. Charing Cross Road. My second book is a book in letters. So I'm so, we're on, on it. We today. are on fire. <laughs> we are. Always, Continue. always. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, 84 Charing Cross Road is a nonfiction one that was between a bookseller, I believe, in New York, and then one in London, and they correspond over the years. And then there was another one that I read that. When I thought about this, I went back and checked it out and mm -hmm. just finished it this morning. It's called Letters from Sky, mm -hmm. and it is literally, um, it's by Jessica Brockmole, and it's, it's kind of got like two stories that intertwine, but this, the letters start out with a young college student in Illinois, and he is writing letters to th this Scottish lady who has published poetry. And she lives on the Isle of Skye, which I really want to go to. Yes, I've heard good things. But anyway, they start this correspondence, and it's right before, like, early 1900s, so before World War I. So they start getting, you know, very, you know, telling each other about their lives, developing this real friendship through these letters. Well, anyway, the young man, his father wants him to be a doctor. He's a doctor in the town. He wants him to go to school. So he's kind of struggling with 
I don't want to do this. This is not who I am. And then here comes World War I. So he mm. enlists after he gets out of school. But they do meet up, these two, the, um, the lady in Scotland and him. And then the letters start from her daughter in Scotland, who is writing a young man in World War II that has just oh. gone away. So she's trying to figure out, she's never met her dad or mom's like a single mom, like what has happened with the story. And I don't want to give too much away, yeah. <laughs> but it really was good because these these stories kind of converge. And um, But it's all like in letters written back and forth, oh. like letters from... Um, the young man in Illinois to the Scottish woman, her daughter to her, and then her daughter to her boyfriend, and then trying to find out what happened to the young man in the beginning. Wow. So, yeah, but it was it was very good. And in the back of the book, you know how we have these things that people can write? Yes, comments. Like 10, 10, 10, wow. 10 plus, 10, 10 plus. So 10 plus plus. I'm not the only one that liked this book. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm going to... I'm gonna mentally write that down on my on my TBR. Yeah, Sean's gonna um, read it. Yeah, it's it's just a nice story. I think it was wow. published in mid 2000s, maybe 2015 or 16. Okay. The one so. I really like is um, Flowers for Algernon. You know, and that's a diary style. Uh -huh. There's no like actual dialogue, but yeah, I guess I would be a fan of the letter writing too probably yeah feels more intimate it is it does it yeah. makes you feel like you kind of know these people and you're getting a real intimate glimpse yes. into their life and, and it feels the characters feel more real to me mm -hmm. because it's from their mouth mm -hmm. right. you know what i mean yeah um my book is the currency literary and potato peel pie society oh i almost had that one too have you read this yeah i've read this one at least so twice. so good yeah um Essentially, it's an author who's writing a book, and she finds a letter from someone. Um, it's in World War II era, the mm -hmm. 1940s, and I haven't read it in a while, and I left my notes at home, so I'm reading from my phone. But um, she is looking for a next book subject, and she gets a letter from a man she's never met from an island called Guernsey. Um, and he is looking for a new correspondent to exchange letters with um, on behalf of his literary society, the Literary and the Potato Peel Pie Society, which potato peel pie um, doesn't sound very appetizing, but there's a great story behind it. Wasn't it something that they did for the World War II when they... <laughs> yes, it was like rationing. It was yeah. like all they had to make pies out of. So they made potato peel pie. Um, so she becomes obviously fascinated by this and um, goes to visit and becomes part of like an alibi for this book club. Um, and they are pretty much breaking curfew from the Germans. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of is a fun, it's all in letters again. So they're having this forbidden book club and potato pie society. Um, and it's just a good, it's, it's a heartwarming read, really. Yeah. Because there's a little bit of romance in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also it's a Netflix series that I've never oh. seen. Yep, I think it was the girl that was the romantic lead was from, she might have been one of the characters from Downton Abbey, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah, Cousin Rose or something. Oh. Yeah. Yes. So it, it's fun. It's fun to read. It's fun to read about. Um, have you watched the series? No. Yeah, no, I haven't either. But I've read that book twice. Me too. Yeah. And it's, it's short and it's very easy to, mm -hmm. you know, you fly through it. So I'd be interested to see if it's a good, it might be a movie instead. Yeah. No, I like that one. Maybe I'll watch that tonight. We're on a very British trend, but I'm going to break that. Oh, well, I will not be. Continue. <laughs> and now that you say that, I think all of mine are British. So yeah, that's, my last, maybe that's a theme. Last one is called The Comfort of Crows. And another thing I like to do when I'm kind of feeling a little bit down or whatever is I like things that I can read in bits. So okay. either like short stories or essays really work for me. But a lot of times I like essays about the natural world or nature. And I found this woman, The Comfort of Crows is by a woman named Margaret Rinkle. This book is kind of having a moment right now because Reese Witherspoon just picked it for Reese's Book Club as her 100th pick. Ooh. Because get this, 
Margaret Brankel was one of her high school teachers. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah. So the author cool. lives in Nashville, and she's written other books of essays that I've read before, and she kind of makes me feel not so weird because she also sits and watches, like, the birds. bluebirds in her <laughs> sure. yards, things like this, and then writes about them. Um, but one of the funniest stories that she wrote about in here was she was – this one is also um, – it has gorgeous illustrations. I was listening to this. This is available mm -hmm. on Hoopla, but I had to buy it because her brother did these gorgeous illustrations in here. I was hoping you'd show these. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm just like you know. I, I want to find one with birds, but like you know, <laughs> nest so or different things. So and it's broken into sections with like fall, spring, winter, you know, summer with just the different things that she sees in her yard. Um, I yeah, mean, you, look at the cover. Yeah, I know. Cool. It's very pretty. It's so lush. But anyway, one of the ones, she was thinking that um, she had found an owl pellet in her yard. She's like, oh, I have a great horned owl. You know, she's taking pictures of it. She's sending it to groups on Facebook like, what is this? Is this an owl pellet? You know, and somebody's like, no, that's coyote scat or something else. And then Very her, different. her husband comes out. And he's just like, do you remember when the vacuum was clogged? No. <laughs> yes. So she's like staring no. at this thing, and it's actually from her vacuum cleaner. Oh so, no! Yeah, poor I woman. Let down. <laughs> so much, uh, so much for her big natural, you know, discovery in her yard. But, but she just talks a lot about too. It, you just feel. Sometimes when you feel agitated, you want to just get outside. I was going to ask if the nature is a big part of that comfort there. Yeah, and that's the way it is for me. A lot of times when I'm just kind of like feeling out of it or feeling down, I just need to get outside. I love mm -hmm. to go to like mended ponds and have like little chickadees eat out of my hand. Oh. And, you know, it's just something about it. It just kind of brings me back to life or grounds me, so to yeah. speak. So, yeah, so that was my last one. Oh, good. My last one is an eternal popular favorite. It's Little Women. Oh, okay. Um, I, I was trying to decide between Little Women and Anna Green Gables because they both kind of fill that same hole for me. But I, I picked on Little Women by Louisa May Alcott because it's just so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't, we don't, you know, we don't need to rehash the plot necessarily because everyone knows for the most part what it's about. But it's um, Civil War era young girls um kind of their lifetime from being kids to growing up to getting married and i just think it represents femininity in such a good way and when i read it as a kid obviously you know i identify with more of the childhood aspects but now as i'm getting older and older it just kind of changes with time mm -hmm. because they go a lot into marriage or motherhood and things like that um so it's comforting because i know the story and a lot of times it's like fun um funny circumstances they're getting into by burning the hair um you know when it's getting curled by her little sister or throwing her book in the fire and all of this fun like big um exciting stuff but also lots of little life lessons in there mm -hmm. so i you know every time i return to it i get something else out of it and i just think that's so enjoyable and it's comforting because i've read it a million times i know the girls um and i identify with a different girl at each point in my life yep um and there are so many adaptations of it as well. Right. There's so many film versions of this one. Yes. Do you have a favorite? I think I like the Winona Ryder, actually. Oh, I do like that one. I like that one, and I like the really old one with Peter Lawrence and Elizabeth Taylor yes. that I used to watch when I was a kid growing up on Saturday morning movie <laughs> time. My favorite is the Greta Gerwig one, the okay. most recent one. I do love the Winona Ryder one. That one... I has hold a special place for me but i think greta gerwig's first of all i love sarah ronan who mm -hmm. plays joe um but i just liked her her take it was not a rehashing of no. everything everyone's already done right um i think pbs did a good adaptation too it's kind of like you know what else i think about with this is jane austen's pride and prejudice Very. that's that would be like another big comfort yeah. read big one and um you know, the different movies with that. I've seen, like, a stage show of that. Really? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, it was good. I took my daughters. We went, they were probably in high school, I think, at the time. We went okay. to Jiva. But, um... Do you have a favorite Mr. Darcy? We might get in a fight over this. Hmm. I don't know if I have a favorite <laughs> Mr. Darcy. Who is yours? <laughs> Um, it's I th Matthew McFadden, I think, 2005. Okay. Well, the one with Keira Knightley. Yes. Colin Firth, strong second. Yeah. 
Yeah, some people really are Colin Firth people. Yeah, they really are. No, I liked the Kira Knightley, I think, version was the favorite, my favorite of that particular movie. Me too. So, all right. Mm-hmm. I feel like we haven't talked that long today, no. which is very unusual for us. You guys, we're rolling. We're rolling? Yeah. Does yeah. Sean have any comfort reads? <clears throat> Yeah, I would say a comfort read for... I was thinking about how I'd define it. Okay. And I think that a comfort read for me is knowing... Is is it either if it's music, movie, or book, I know how it's going to make me feel, so I'll use it as a pill almost. I agree. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, that's exactly... Almost what. as like either a remedy mm-hmm. in a way. Um, Catcher in the Rye is one of those for me. Uh, the Martian is always one of those for me. Stories of alienation generally tend to resonate with me for some weird reason. Okay, who knows? Um, but then, you know, there's always dunces. <laughs> <laughs> A confederacy of dunces. Yeah, I can't let go of that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but lately, Salinger, uh, J.D. Salinger's, I've been going backwards a lot. So, uh, Franny and Zoe. I love mm-hmm. Franny and Zoe. And then uh, Seven Stories. Uh, that first story in the seven stories. I don't know if you've read that. I haven't. Check that out. Okay. That's not a comfort read. No, but. No, because every story, I don't know how I'm going to feel after right. each one. And right. they're weird. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. But like in a fun way. Yeah. yeah, those classics, sometimes they're really good tonic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Harry Potter, too. Yeah, that's a big one yeah. for me. Like, you know, reading something, and I remember when my kids were growing up, and they were excited about it and reading it, and I think exactly. I read each of those at least three times. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They're so, and they're so palatable. Yeah. And they do start, you know, a little juvenile, but get more in-depth as it goes on. I yep. just, I don't know, there's something comforting about reading those younger adult stories as well. Did you ever read The One and Only Ivan, a middle grade book? No. Oh, I love that one. Laura Beth and I both love that one. Uh-huh. And that is the one that is based on a real gorilla that um, learned how to draw and stuff and communicated. And the, I believe the author is Kate Appleton. And It is, yeah. Um, a little elephant comes. He's in like a little trapped circus in a mall in, I think, the Pacific West Coast. And he learns to draw these pictures and people start coming to see them and he gets the elephant out like that's his goal that's is so to get cute. and he ends up in like a big one of those nature preserve type zoos but oh if you're an animal lover it's oh. like i still recommend that one when i'm in children's like you've got to read it i know yeah. that one's so popular i really should read it yeah she i think they She's made a series off of it. She has made a series, and I can't say I like the rest of the books as much as I like the first one. Noted. Yeah. The other one I like that's middle grade was called Pax, and it was about a fox. That one's very good. I can see the cover now that you mentioned it. Yes, yeah. it's a little fox And that on the one cover. is kind of like a dystopian world, and it's, it's not like a great feel-good story, but it's kind of that coming of age where the boy is mm-hmm. struggling. It's his dad. War is coming. He's taking care of this fox and then eventually, you know, having to let go, you know. So, but that was a really good one, too. I think I've read that one at least twice. And I've read the sequel. (laughs) It's very a la Where the Red Friend Grows. Yeah. That one's not a comfort read. (laughs) Don't don't read that one. Actually read it. Be prepared. But no, I I think reading like a middle grade or something like you mm-hmm. said from your childhood that you're familiar yeah, with it is just always very that, comforting. That um, curiosity and joy that you tend to lose mm-hmm. in day to day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this was a good topic. Something yeah. interesting, something different to talk about. So, but let's see. So next time I will be talking more about fall wicks again. I'm going to be diving into the witches. I'll be thinking of you because oh, that's my favorite. I know. Um, Do we know who that's with? It's going to be Molly. Oh, okay. Molly. Oh, cool. should be good. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you? Can I have one title preview of what you're what you're reading your witch books this year? I have several that I'm trying to read, okay. and I'm trying to get everything in before I'm going on vacation <laughs> in October. So, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I make it. I may be doing some repeats here, but um, 
Not just witches, but magical realism, that yes, type thing. Yes, I love magical realism. Oh, me too. Mm-hmm. Especially this time of year. But So thank you for joining us. As always, the links to the book we talk about will be in the show. And next month, I will, or next week, uh, next week, what am I talking about? <laughs> next time. Next time. Next time. Yeah. We'll be doing um, a guest with Molly, and she'll be talking about her witchy books. So... I'm already starting to talk about the best books or think about the best books of 2024. I can't believe it's it's like Me October. Either. I feel like we just did the 2023 one. I know. I know. <laughs> so, but anyway, thank you for joining us. Yes. It's always fun to Anytime. have you. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library, made possible through the support of the friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed 